Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host, Jim Massa. Now, I want to discuss with you, and I kind of think it was a continuation of the video I just did, where uh, I'm talking about the Arctic sea ice. So what do we got going on here? Well, now this is data from the 19th of July, and I know my, pre uh, my presentation took you into September, but the purpose of this uh, presentation is to discuss with you the reasons why the Arctic ice has been dropping off like you wouldn't believe. So um, the Arctic sea ice is plummeting the new record low, Russia, Siberia are basically ice-free, uh, you know, the, the oceans above Russia, Siberia. So this graphic, if, what you look at here are the orange lines. The orange lines represent the median ice edge from 81 to 2010. Median is the 50th percentile. So that means if we were to look at all the data from all the years, 50% of the data would have uh, ice extending south of the median ice edge, the other 50% north of the median ice edge. When you look at this graphic here, with very, very few exceptions, none of the ice even reaches the median level. Some spots it does, some might even slightly cross, you know, just south of the median ice edge. But really, you know, we're talking off uh, northeastern Greenland, it reaches the ice edge primarily and into the Beaufort Sea. But you can see this is just all open water here. So to orientate you guys here, Bering Strait. So this is the East Siberian Sea. This is the Laptev Sea, right there where the cursor is. Okay, then we get to the Kara Sea. This is this little uh, island is called Novaya Zemlya, which is a uh, new earth in uh, Russian language. And then this is the Barents Sea. Over here we have the Chukchi, into the Chukchi Sea over here getting into the Beaufort Sea. So so when I talk about, uh, they're talking about East Siberian Sea into the Laptev, basically ice-free. So, sea ice is on uh, lowest on record along the Siberian side of the Arctic, Laptev Sea, as I just uh, mentioned. Noted Zachary Leib, a climate scientist at Colorado State University Department of Atmospheric Science. He just uh, completed his doctorate uh, in the UCAL uh, uh, system, and uh, he's now gotten a position there. So congrats to uh, Zach. He does wonderful work. In total, Arctic sea ice is about 500,000 square kilometers under the previous record low. We're seeing a truly remarkable event within the Arctic Circle, said Zach. A number of factors, this is what I wanted to discuss, a number of factors are causing this rapid decrease in the sea ice. Extreme heat wave recently hit the Siberian region. My, and I've discussed uh, those that situation with you guys in previous video segment. Reaching 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, highest temperature ever recorded in uh, within the Arctic Circle. This heat likely melted sea ice above Siberia too, explained Dr. Meyer, who is with associated with the NSIDC, National Science Ice Data Center, in Boulder, Colorado. Warm temperatures cause water to pool on the surface of sea ice, accelerating the melt. Everything amplifies when you get that heat early in the season. So early, hot, hot conditions to begin with, early heat, uh, early melt, and it goes from there. There are now vast regions of open water, which also amplify Arctic heating and ice melt. Due to the wide open uh, ocean, which would normally still be sea uh, ice covered, sea surface temperatures are rising more than 5C above average. As the heat energy is absorbed by the water, we don't have the ice reflecting it, so no albedo, and, and that is a significant input of energy. And that, uh, you know, it's, Dr. Lave explains. 
Water temperatures are well above freezing in waters above Siberia at some 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's basically uh, 4C. For the Arctic, that's very warm conditions. Sea ice is significantly thinner. We're losing the multi-year ice. That means the ice melts more easily during the summer. Winds blowing from the south push sea ice away from the coast. Usually it hugs the coast. Changes in the temperature and the pressure gradients, along with changes in the, in the Gulf Stream, is going to uh, cause changes, shifts in the wind direction. Now, I cover some of these uh, graphics, and these are early on in the season. Um, and we now know how little ice there is. So here's some other things going on. The Arctic is warming about three times faster than the rest of the world. Notice it says three times faster. Used to be two times. It's now three times faster. You have that water absorbing the heat energy. It gives off that heat energy during the winter time as it cools down to form the ice. And that keeps the air temperatures warmer than usual. So it's warming three times faster than the rest of the world. And the sea ice trend compared to the historical record is plummeting very significantly. <coughs> Excuse me. Less sea ice means a warmer Arctic. Mounting evidence that a heating Arctic results in more persistent atmospheric pattern creating stagnant weather events like longer heat waves in the U.S., Europe, and elsewhere. Basically, what they're referring to is what's happening to the Arctic Dipole, what is happening to the Arctic Oscillation, what is happening to the North Atlantic Oscillation. For more details on what those uh, entities are, please uh, check out my videos where I discuss uh, all the major oscillatory systems of the planet. Unprecedented fires have erupted in the Arctic Circle over the last two years. A warmer Arctic may mean a shift towards extreme fire behavior in this polar region. Burning that releases copious amounts of heat-trapping carbon dioxide and methane and nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. Loss of sea ice devastates polar bears. They require the sea ice to hunt. Biologists expect many polar bear subpopulations to die out this century. This continues, polar bears will go extinct. The once frozen ground, the permafrost thaws, infrastructure like oil tanks have begun to fail. And then you get environmental pollution and devastation. In the Arctic, when, you, when we do the construction up here, the assumption is the ground is rock solid, it will never uh, thaw out, it will stay frozen, and you can just build on top of it. Well, guess what? As it thaws, Things swamp, shift, and you get a uh, situation that are not good. I did a video segment on exploring that very issue of what a thawing permafrost, a warming Arctic means to uh, places, uh, settlements, cities, uh, villages, etc. you know, where humans live within the Arctic. I've seen changes here in, in Alaska, you know, ground slumping, road slumping, buildings slump into the ground. Uh, yeah, it, it's getting crazy. But if you have an oil tank and the ground slumps and the oil tank falls over, well, now you have a spill on your hands, and that's not good. But then you get that crap into the tundra vegetation. Tundra vegetation takes a long time to grow. It will do irre irreversible damage and harm for centuries. So this all indicates changes uh, in the Arctic on the planet so um i wanted to bring you this very quick video to give you some of the reasons for uh what we are experiencing and uh what's going on in the arctic and how you know, this has consequences for the planet because what happens in the arctic does not stay in the arctic so quick little video thank you for your time Hello folks, this is Jim here with Science Talk, asking you to please subscribe to my channel and to inform others of my channel and of the work that I do. Please share to social media platforms that you use. 
Also, as a reminder, don't forget to click the bell so that you know when I load up more videos. Finally, I ask that you support the work that I do by becoming a patron at patreon.com. Details in the description box below. Thank you for your support.